right, Dave. Uh, with that being said, uh, as Cynthia uh, stated, uh, my name is Sergeant Major Mike Kufchak. I'm probably a little underdressed. Uh, the very handsome gentlemen that you see in this room here are all in uniforms tonight. Uh, that, that is uh, uh, the Marines of 3rd Assault Amphibian Battalion, led by Lieutenant Colonel uh, Howard Hall, who happens to be in the audience. Colonel Hall, can I get you to raise your hand? Lieutenant Colonel Hall is, is one of uh, roughly about 30 commanders that uh, Major General uh, uh, Ronald Bailey stores along and, and probably one of our most prominent commanders. And of course, uh, you get to see his Marines uh, firsthand. They are sharp, handsome young men. Are they or are they not? Yeah. Now, with that being said, uh, on behalf of Major General uh, Ronald Al Bailey, uh, myself, uh, thank you very much for the invite out here tonight. Uh, again, I didn't know that I was going to be required to be in uniform. Cynthia, uh, uh, as she extends her hand to me quite often, uh, says, Hey, Mike, come on down for a good time tonight in San Clemente. I'm going to buy you dinner, uh, give you a few drinks. Uh, as a matter of fact, make sure your, uh, your wife, uh, Barbara, your bride, is in tow with you, but unfortunately she's not. So I actually ran all the way down here from 29 Palms today. Uh, no, 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 that's not a bad thing at all by any stretch of the uh, imagination whatsoever. We've got our last regimental combat team preparing to deploy to Afghanistan. And I'll, I'll touch on that here uh, very, very briefly. But uh, for what Cynthia, in the words of hope, comfort, and promise, have done for the 1st Marine Division, my gosh, I could have been in Kansas. I would have been here tonight to help support Cynthia and you guys for everything that you do for us. So uh, if my military friends in the room, all those of you handsome gentlemen that are in uniform, please join me in a round of applause for uh, Cynthia and all of her uh, donators. I, I tell you, you know, it, it's funny. Uh, uh, you hear a lot of things in the media. The political, uh, political landscape is changing. It's an election year. Lots of things uh, going on. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, the one thing that I've really, really noticed, uh, unlike uh, uh, kind of being a product of the 60s, so to speak, and old enough to kind of realize what was going on in the country during civil rights, hips, hippies, gypsies, uh, rock and roll, Woodstock, man on the moon. A lot of things going on during the 60s, but our military service members weren't received so very well at all during that time. Because there was a lot of controversy going on in the country at that time. Like I said, civil rights, women rights, lots of things going on. The country was kind of divided, uh, so to speak. And not that we've lost our way or, any, or we lost our way back then, but it, it was a time uh, uh, of, of change. And some, there are some uh, gentlemen here in this crowd right now that uh, certainly remember that all too well. Some of you served the military uh, by choice, and some of you probably not by choice, because we had a thing that we called the draft. Uh, and as you well know, today's uh, military uh, armed forces is an all-volunteer forces because of what you guys sacrificed way back then. But my point is merely this. Fast forward the tape all the way uh, to the 21st century. You know, despite all the things that are happening in this world right now and in this country, the political landscape, uh, uh, recessions and so forth, the one thing that has rang true is you guys. Your support of your American, uh, American military service members, men and women both, you have not failed us at all. You've received us with warm welcoming arms each and every time we've departed the continental United States and especially upon our return. We finally found ourselves where we can put everything aside and support the people that are actually out there making a difference in the world right now to ensure your safety, my safety, and the future of our children and the future of this country as well too. Not to negate the fact that, that we're trying to make a difference in the lives of other people around the world. We're not trying to turn them into Americans or anything like that, but we're just trying to help them get on their feet so that they can have and bask and share what it is that we do and sometimes what we take for granted on a daily basis. So I say thank you to each and every one of you for that. All right. Now, the good news is merely this. Uh, as I uh, alluded to earlier, uh, Major General Ronald Bailey, the Commanding General of 1st Marine Division, uh, who uh, stores along some almost 25,000 Marines and sailors of the 1st Marine Division, uh, I am happy to announce that uh, as of the early, morning, or the early hours of tomorrow morning, Major General Ronald Bailey is sending out his, what we perceive to be our last and final regimental combat team from 1st Marine Division off to Afghanistan. Now, these guys are led by Colonel uh, Sparky Redforth, and they're going out for a one-year tour. However, comma, 
This tour is going to be a little bit different as our mission is going to be a little bit different as they close out and we prepare to close out of Afghanistan and they start to retrograde back with all the gear and equipment. Make no mistake about it, and I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't have to uh, sugarcoat anything for you. Iraq, or I'm sorry, rather, Afghanistan is still a very, very dangerous place over there. We have men uh, dying over there, not, not daily, uh, but my gosh, we, we, we lose on average of a couple a week, and that's through all the military services that are over there forward deployed right now uh, that are doing all the heavy lifting over there. So it is a very, very dangerous place over there. We've done a great job over there, but uh, uh, Colonel Sparky Redforth and the Regimental Combat Team 7 to include uh, a multi, multi units of combat neighbors over there to do all the heavy lifting, to get all that gear and equipment back here so that we can retool ourselves and refocus towards a, a different area of operation uh, as we make our way ahead. But again, uh, if not for you, through Iraq and Afghanistan, and this is the, the longest war this country's been involved with for many, many years, okay? And my gosh, I hope and I pray, just like each and every one of you, that we, don't, that we do not endure anything like this ever again in our future. Uh, this long. Uh, I have personally been the recipient uh, of many of your gifts of faith, love. My gosh, I can't even, I can't even put it into words. Uh, the, th the things that I've received from you guys out here, not as specific individuals, but I've been the recipient of those letters uh, at home, those care, uh, those care packages and so forth. And it's just the little things, the small things. It may be, uh, my gosh, uh, a, a book, a paperback book, um, you know, wet naps, uh, sometimes toilet paper, that toothbrush, that toothpick sometimes, that little uh, box of uh, Slim Jims, things that probably mean nothing to nobody else in the world have made all the difference in our lives when we were forward deployed. And it consciously reminded us daily, and it reminds the men daily, that there's someone back here caring. That is what has allowed these men to persevere forward uh, and kept their motivation and their enthusiasm up because of your support back here. It's one thing to have the love of a family and to receive a letter from your wife and family but it's another to receive something from a total stranger who doesn't know you from Adam, but is wishing you all the best and giving a small piece of themselves to you just to make sure that you have them small creature comforts to make your life just a little bit better. So thank you for that. And in closing, I would tell you one other thing too. Uh, you know, we, get a lot, we give a lot of lip service to what you're doing for your American uh, fighting men and women that are for it. But I want to tell you something else about the, uh, Cynthia Martinez in the words of comfort, hope, and promise. Uh, these guys extend well beyond our military organizational units here in 1st Marine Division. Because while the, the men are forward uh, making a difference in the world, Cynthia is back here with her warm receiving arms, arms rather wide open, taking in the wives, the spouses, and pampering them gals. And making their lives all that much more better as well too because she knows that their partner, their marital partner, is forward deployed, and he's living a life of danger out there. So anything Cynthia and the words of comfort, hope, and promise, and all her supporting cast members can do to take the sting out of that, excuse me, <clears throat> to take the sting out of that, God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't say it enough. So with that, I'm going to stop running my, uh, my lips so much, and I'm going to turn it back over to Cynthia. Okay. Cynthia, we love you. <laughs> Cynthia.